This video is going to be a little bit different than I had originally planned because what I had originally planned was to help you guys find a Linux distribution based on your use case. And for myself and probably many of you guys out there, gaming is going to be the use case. So find the best gaming Linux distribution. Now, as I started testing different distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, uh, Pop OS 22.04, I tested Manjaro. Fedora even, and more specifically, Nobara, which is Glorious Egg Roll's spin on Fedora. So it's not really a complete distro, it's just like tweaks and modifications that Glorious Egg Roll made to Fedora in order to have it more gamer oriented. And as I was installing all these distros onto my SSD, I started noticing one thing. A lot of them couldn't hold up to what I wanted, except for one. And it's still a Debian based distribution, and that one is Pop OS. So here we are on the desktop for Pop OS 22.04. Now this is basically a fresh install. I've had it installed for about a month now and I've been using it since and I'm absolutely in love with Pop OS 22.04. This distribution has everything that I want and need and I feel like this is going to be a great entry distribution for a lot of people including gamers out there. Now right off the bat you're going to notice we have this beautiful wallpaper that is the stock wallpaper that you get when you install Pop OS 22.04. And on the bottom here, this dock, you can configure any which way you want. You can have it extend to the edges. You can have it the way I have it laid out here. You can do anything you want to it. And it's very configurable and it's very nice. And in the settings tab, you can go through everything here. You can go from your Wi-Fi, your network, uh, Bluetooth desktop. You can have all these different stuff. The dock appearance is right here. So you can enable dock. You can have it extend to the screen edges if you want, or you can have it just the way I have it, kind of a floating a desk, uh, dock here, which I prefer and actually like since I do use Mac OS as well for my editing. It just feels more comfortable and right at home. So you do kind of get like a Mac OS type feeling with this whole thing, including even with the in the settings tab and setting pages here. You have different workspaces. You can set up uh, a fixed number of workspaces or you can have dynamic workspaces where it'll just open more workspaces as you keep going. The privacy tab allows you to isolate and allows you to share information that you want to share or disable anything you don't want you don't you don't want to share like location services which i have disabled uh, any of your file history or anything like that you can disable or enable any of that at your choosing which is really nice workspaces gives you an overview of what's going on on each virtual desktop now you have multiple desktops here that you can add i set an, a fixed number of four since i usually only use one so my main desktop here has all these applications open at once and I can select them to actually open it up like his heroic launcher and this is basically Epic Game Store um, but you can do that as many times as you want and you can go to I can go to my Steam I can open it up anything I, I want at the same time or and I'll continue to tile them out the way Pop OS sees fit. The other really cool thing about Pop OS 22.04 is the Pop Shop. Now, the Pop Shop is basically your app stores where you get all your applications, your games, everything is all right inside of the Pop Shop. Now, they do use the Ubuntu um, repositories here, but it's actually modified to include even more software. So, if you go into the Ubuntu repositories, you're not going to find Lutris. Here, all I got to do is type in Lutris and it will pop up. Oh, if I can spell it correctly. It'll pop right up and you can install it right from here. Proton QT up, a Proton up QT, excuse me, is a way to install Proton GE versions. It's an easier way to install those. It's a GUI interface, very easy to do, very easy to use. It's a must have if you're going to be gaming on this Linux machine. Now, the other thing you can type in is say Steam. And here are all the applications that are related to Steam and gaming basically. Uh, Steam actually has multiple versions you can download. You can install the dev version, which I have installed, or you can install the Flathub or Flatpak version of Steam itself. And the Flatpak version is the native version, so you have to come into the uh, into the software, into the application, and actually select the drop down from the drop down menu, Pop OS or the dev version of it, which is the standard version that goes across any any Debian based distribution. So if you wanted to have that, you can have that there. You can also scroll down a little bit and you can see a bunch of different stuff here. Game Hub, Games, Heroic Game Launchers here, Lutris is here. You have a bunch of stuff that you can do and you, you can have on here that is not really available on something like Ubuntu 22.04 or Linux Mint, which is also based on Ubuntu 22.04. 
So even though Papa West 22.04 is based on Ubuntu 22.04, They've made some modifications here and they've added a lot more software in their repositories so that way you can have more choices and more um, applications on here at your ready. Another really cool feature about Pop OS 22.04 is I can come up here and actually toggle on tile windows. So I can have a basically a tile window manager inside of Pop OS 22.04. So if I open up Lutris and then I open up Steam and I open up Chrome and then I open up my OBS Studio, for instance, it'll start tiling these out in a way that they see fit. So if you don't want these to be tiled in a certain way, you can modify it and bring this down here. You can move stuff around. You can move these tiles any which way you want and have things overlaid and whatnot. So it's not like a dedicated tiling window manager, but it does work and it does work pretty well. It's not 100% fluid, but again, it does work well for what it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually shut these tile windows off. I'm gonna minimize a lot of this stuff here. And I'm going to bring up the System76 website because I found it very interesting when it comes to how you actually install Pop OS 22.4. This is another really cool feature about Pop OS. So here is System76. This is the parent company of Pop OS. This is the people who actually made Pop OS 22.04, and they release it with every bit of their hardware. It's all installed across their laptops, their desktops, and they are a system builder. This is what they do. They specialize in Linux system building. And for what they do, they do a fantastic job. And they make modifications to it like they disable the Windows IME as much, uh, the uh, Intel IME, excuse me, for as much as they can without breaking system functionality. So that's just one example of, of, of a lot of the tweaks and customizations that they do for their own machines. And they have done a lot of stuff with Pop OS. So if you come on to Pop OS itself and you go to download, this is where it gets kind of interesting. So you have three different versions of Pop OS that you can install based on your hardware in your system. So me, I have the NVIDIA GTX 1080 installed on my system. So I would download the LTS, 22.04 LTS NVIDIA version of it to work with the latest and greatest graphics card, that's a uh, graphics driver that's available for my GTX 1080 inside of my machine. Now, if you have something like Intel or AMD GPUs, you can just download the 22.04 LTS and then you're using the Mesa drivers. It is a cut and dry, easy way to tell if it's going to work on your system based on your GPU. I really like that. And they even have a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 version that we can run Pop OS 22.04 on a Raspberry Pi 4 if you wanted to. So I thought that was like a nice little touch here. And I do like the fact that they make different dedicated versions of Pop OS for different graphics cards and different use cases. It's really nice. And I appreciate System76 for actually doing that. And let's talk about other stuff. So we have things like Caden Live. So if I pop in Caden Live here, this is a free and open source uh, video editing software, which does work for the most part. I don't use it anymore, but I did use it when I first started the channel and it does work well. But you have things like Caden Live for vi uh, video editing. I have OBS for screen recording, which is on what I'm using now to, to capture this uh, footage. Uh, they have Lutris here. They have a bunch of stuff. I even got Escape from Tarkov running, which is a Windows only game. I got it running in Linux. Now it did kick me out after I started to get into a match and as I started loading, but I was able to get the game running and get to the menu system and mess around that way. So I think with a little bit of tweaking, I can actually get the game to work on Linux. Hopefully they won't ban me, but I'm hopeful and I want to get Tarkov actually running in here. And I also have Final Fantasy 14 online playing on this Linux based operating system perfectly fine. Now, as far as game performance go, it goes really well. My only issue with this thing is I have a problem with G overlay. Whenever I go to run it, it doesn't want to open up. I even have Mango HUD installed and it still will not pop up. So all the game footage that you're seeing is going to have the steam overlay with just the FPS. So here you go. Another thing I want to touch upon is the built-in software. So I have added a lot of software here. I've added Chrome, I've added Geary, I believe. I added a lot of stuff here that normally will not come installed out of the box. Uh, so GeoVillay is not installed out of the box. Duck Station is a PS1 emulator. It doesn't 
come out of the box. But you can all get that from the pop shop, which is a nice little touch. Boxes is a virtualization, um, desktop virtualization, so you can actually run different Linux-based operating systems on this main PC, on one PC, or you can actually run Windows if you want to actually try that and play Windows-only games like Tarkov um, on a Windows-based system. So Boxes is really nice. I haven't got 100% working yet, so I'm not going to show you guys that. Um, but everything here is available in the pop shop. I haven't had to go to third party sites to try to find anything. It's all available there. Now, Office Suite, you get full Libre Office Suite here. So if you're into writing or any sort of productivity, as far as taking notes or spreadsheets and stuff like that, you have a full free and open source uh, Libre Office Suite right here. Your system is basically, the system tab is basically all the you know, disk usage or how many hard drives you have installed, what you can, all your disks you can check. You can even check your NVIDIA X server settings. So if I go here into the X server settings, you can see I'm running the 5.15.65.01 driver version, which is pretty current for Linux. It's up there. And they get updates very, very regularly. So I've had to update this system almost every day. There's always something to update. Pop OS is, uh, System76 is constantly pushing updates to Pop OS 22.04 to keep it current. Uh, against any sort of threats or malware or anything like that so that's all there and you even have your utilities here and usb flasher is a really nice little program if you guys are not familiar with um something like belina etcher it's kind of like Belina. It's, it is like belina etcher so you can flash usb uh, usb hard drives or usb sticks rather thumb drives in order to make bootable usbs the usb flasher here i used it and it actually works quite well and similarly and similarly to Bolina Etcher. So you don't have to get another third party software. It comes right out of the box with uh, Pop OS 22.04. And you have a bunch of other stuff here, but I would definitely recommend getting rid of this videos application and try to find something like VLC or another type of third party uh, video application. If you plan on doing a lot of recording and playing back, it can get a little hairy. I'm still trying to find something better than VLC, but for now, I just use VLC instead of the videos app because it doesn't work very well with the codecs that OBS puts out and a whole mess of stuff. So VLC is where I go, but you can use whichever one that's available in the pop shop or you can try to find one in a third party somewhere and a PPA somewhere and just use that instead if you feel more comfortable. The only real issue that I've actually had was originally my 27 inch HP Omen 27i had issues to where it would turn on fractional scaling to 200% and then kick my refresh rate back down to like 59.6, whatever, 59.9 or whatever, whatever it was. So yeah, there it is, 59.95. So I would have to go back into my settings, reconfigure it every time I turn the monitor off and back on. But what I did was I disabled the high DPI daemon here, shut that both off, the mode and, and the DPI daemon itself. And it seemed to actually fix it, fix the issue. Another thing I want to talk about with Pop OS 22.04 is the peripherals. So if you're worried about a certain hardware that you have kicking around that's not going to work with Linux or Pop OS 22.04, I have a Logitech G910 Orion Spectrum keyboard here. And usually when I plug it into a lot of Linux distributions, it just goes rainbow puke, and there's no way to set it or any way to change it or anything like that. And with Pop OS 22.04, after I installed it, it just went to blue, and I'm okay with that. There's really no other way to tweak any of the colors on here since it is full RGB, but I'm okay with blue for now. They did have a program here that was called Sol Solar. Here it is. And it's just not picking up my keyboard, unfortunately. But there are programs and there are ways to do, there, are, there is ways to get this thing to work, but for me, it just worked out of the box. I didn't have to mess around with any settings, no nothing. It just went blue and that's it. Even my Scarlett 2i2 audio interface works perfectly. That's what I'm talking to you guys on now with this uh, AT2020 microphone. Even the Corsair Scimitar Pro mouse that I have here has a piece of software in the pop shop that allows me to change all my key bindings and all my LEDs and everything on this mouse to how I see fit. So even if you have something like a proprietary Corsair mouse, there's something on Linux or there's something on a distribution like Pop OS 22.04 has made tweaks and it actually incorporated things for third party software. You can actually make tweaks and do whatever you need to do with certain hardware. So my Scimitar Pro, I'm able to do all this stuff with. So if you have some hardware and you're afraid that it's not going to work, 
load Pop OS 20204 on a flash drive, pop it in your computer, and mess with it. Pop OS 20204 is a very powerful piece of software, and I highly recommend this to anybody who's trying to break away from Windows and moving over to Linux. It's a fun, friendly distribution, and I cannot get over how easy this thing is to use and how well it runs in games and everything that I throw at it. It's a perfect piece of software, in my opinion, and this is why I fell in love with Pop OS 20204. But even as much as I like and even love Pop OS 2204, this is not going to be the only Linux distro that I test out on this channel as a long-term solution. The next one's going to be Nobara GNOME Edition. I'm actually going to be taking that and installing it onto my SSD and just doing a complete fresh install and testing out the entire system like I did with Pop OS 2204 and reporting my findings right back here. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe in this video so that way you don't miss anything that I post on this channel. And until next time, guys, I'm Joshua for Love of Games, signing out. Have a great day.